بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا يا كريم My dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's assistance. And we seek guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and the adverse consequences of our deeds. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees guidance upon the none can misguide that person and whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees misguidance upon then none can guide him and peace and salutations be upon the final messenger Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the outset and since we have or it's become a theme especially in the last two talks of our series I must enlighten you all that after my bath talk I lost my voice and Alhamdulillah we still managed to go to Bristol and Cardiff and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted strength walillah alhamd it's come back I was joking with the brothers earlier I said they asked how's your voice I said the bass seems to be coming back but the treble still needs some fixing but inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us strength and an ability to be clear but if I do have to turn to the right and left and clear the vocal cords a little bit, please excuse me. Barakallahu feekum. My dear mothers, fathers, brothers and sisters, mashallah. The title for today is Leadership Begins at Home. And no doubt leadership is a term which we've been using time and time again over the course of this particular series and no doubt that it is a term coined many a time today many a time today and in actual fact this whole concept of leadership and being a leader and a visionary and so on and so forth even though it's coined many a time today it's not something foreign and strange to Islam these concepts Islam came with, in fact. And this is clear from anyone who ponders and deliberates over the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And his mannerisms and etiquettes and methodologies and how he nurtured those that would carry the baton after him in working their way towards spreading Islam to the four corners of this world. This is exemplary leadership, but that's why there's no, nothing strange when we find historians like Michael Hart actually list Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the most inspirational person of his remit of study in his book, The Hundred Most Influential People. I forget the exact name, but it revolves around that particular context. So it's not strange. Uh, he does say in his book that it may seem strange, but that is, it seems strange for the disbeliever. It's not strange for the believer. And as we say in the Arabic language, wala ajaban fi dhalik. There's nothing strange in that. This is a reality and fact. It's a reality and fact. Good leadership is, or when we look at success, success, it's always synonymous with good leadership, even communal success. When we look at success within communities, we find that this success happens because of value-based leadership. And this is prevalent, again, in the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and especially after Hijrah to Medina, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam established the center of Islam, or the capital of Islam, and how the community developed into an active and proactive entity, right? This was based on value-led and based leadership. So leadership is something synonymous with success. However, brothers and sisters, when we discuss this topic, we've got to bring it down 
to its grassroots. And whenever we bring something down to its foundation, we understand that charity begins at home. Charity begins at home. And if this is the case, then true leadership has to start from the inside and then transcend outwards. Its foundation has to be planted and rooted and set and perfected inwardly before it transcends to the outwards. And if this is not the case, then we are nothing but personalities instead of people of character. We know when you traverse through the books of leadership, they discuss this concept of the personality trait versus the character trait. The personality trait versus the character trait. That today we live in an age of personalities. We live in an age of personalities. You are perceived as you coin yourself to be perceived, or as you pitch yourself to be perceived. A person can walk into this masjid with the, with the latest suit, wearing a designer label, and he could be from the most impoverished of people. But you and I, when we see him, we consider him a rich person. A person that possesses financial standing and material well-being. And in retrospect, you can have a millionaire or a billionaire, but they can pitch themselves as someone from the impoverished, dress like someone who is a destitute. And by default, we will look at this person and consider them to be from those that are poor. Is this not the case? This is the reality of the era that we live in. This happened with the turn of the century and as the ages moved from one age to the next, Right? From the agricultural age to the industrial age, and now we are in the age of information technology. So, these changes happened. And when we look at things from the, or from a seat of personification, or using this term, the personality trait, then we become superficial people. Superficial people, we're not really what people perceive us to be what people perceive us to be, right? So again, don't forget, we're tying this to this concept of charity beginning at home. It all begins from the beginning. It all begins from the beginning. This institutionalized place that religion and society has given diligence to the home, it has the perfect setting to breed excellence, to breed excellence. Now this concept of looking at characters and not personalities is something taught to us by the Sharia. It's taught to us by the Sharia. Our Sharia nurtures us to be people of substance. That we look at realities and base matters upon realities and take time to source the reality. Even if somebody comes to our home with the intention of marrying our daughter, we are taught by the Sharia to take the steps and not just judge matters based on what we see in front of us. And how Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an rightly advised a person and said, knowing a person happens through dealing with them, through traveling with them, through living with them. That's how you get to know a person. And even those who specialize in this science of personalities and characters, they say this, they say the problem with the personality trait, it has benefits. You can traverse the ranks or the leadership ranks or the ranks in your business or, or, or the corporate world that you might be in. You can get your promotions. The problem with the personality trait is that it all falls apart when push comes to shove. When push comes to shove, the reality of the person immediately comes up and the personality is dissolved, right? Our Sharia teaches us to be people of substance. When you travel with a person, in traveling there's difficulty. So certain realities will present itself. A person's ability to truly tolerate matters comes out. A person's ability to be fussy, for example, comes out. What they prefer eating, what they don't prefer eating. Now certain realities become known. Those realities which are normally hidden, this is the flaw with the personality trait. 
So Islam nurtures us to be people of character. We nurture characters and we present characters. We are people of substance and are not shallow. And this is clear when we listen to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنظُرُ إِلَىٰ صُوَرِكُمْ وَلَا إِلَىٰ أَجْسَامِكُمْ وَلَاكِنْ يَنظُرْ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your outwardness. He doesn't judge you based on your appearance. However, He judges you based on your deeds and judges you based on your intentions and your heart. SubhanAllah. The intention is hidden. The heart is hidden. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges us by. You can observe the salah, but if it's done for somebody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't accept the salah from you. Subhanallah. It's not a case of you being seen to be observing the salah. It's the reality of you observing salah. It's the character behind the act, not the personality. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hypocrites, He says subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَهُمْ تُعْجِبُكَ أَجْسَامُهُمْ That when you look at the hypocrites, what amazes you is their appearance. They show, but they hide their realities. This is hypocrisy. When you show something contradictory to what you actually believe, or show somebody something which contradicts what you really are. This is the personality trait versus the character trait. Ala kulli We don't want to dive into a character building exercise, but I want you to understand how important the home is. That it all starts with the internal and it transcends outwards. It transcends outwards. Now, with this we understand how this topic of leadership and home become married together. Because if you want to be a successful leader, it has to start when everything is hidden. When everything is hidden from the inside. From the inside. Now when we talk about a home, especially since this topic has discussed home and leadership, we think of three entities by default. The first entity is a father. And the second entity is the mother. And the third entity is the fruits of that marriage, which are the children. Right? And this is in the Quran. This is in the Quran. And in Surah Yusuf. In Surah Yusuf, when we look at the dream of Surah Yusuf, or in Surah Yusuf, we see Yusuf alayhi salam having seen the sun and the moon and 11 stars. Right? The sun and the moon and 11 stars. And at the end of the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, there's an interpretation that happens based on this dream. This dream was interpreted and it was, there's two opinions of the Mufassirun, but if we take one opinion, which is the minority opinion, but for the purposes of our discussion, at the end of the story we see that the sun represented one of the pillars of the home, and the moon represented one of the pillars of the home, and the stars represented another pillar of the home. The stars represented the children, the fruits of the marriage, whilst the sun represented, according to the opinion we want to use, the father. And the moon represented the mother. Right? So this is clear that a home has these entities. And these roles should never become confusing. They should never become confusing. Every role has specifics. And when we mix and match, like when you go to Marks and Spencer's, you have mix and match deals. Right? But when you mix and match, problems arise. And building leaders becomes something difficult. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Let's, let's talk a little bit about this dream of Yusuf alayhi salam. You might have heard it before because I taught it in a course and mashallah they, they recorded it and cut that particular piece and sent it around. So you might have heard it but for those who didn't let's repeat it and it's, it's good for this particular discussion. And Alhamdulillah we have the camera recording as well. So people will benefit thereafter. When we analyze this dream of Yusuf alayhi salam and what it represents and we compare the father and the son, and the mother and the moon, and the children and the stars, we understand how important role playing and being diligent with our roles is in the formation of leadership. And in the formation of creating leaders of tomorrow, which is our children. So when we look at the son, for example, we see that the son 
when it comes out, it brightens everything. And as a result, people go to work. And when you go to work, there's earning that takes place. And when the sun is out, people feel secure. Right? When do you feel more scared? In the day or at night? The fathers don't want to answer because the children are here. <laughs> you can still answer, inshallah. It's natural. We feel more scared. When do we feel more scared, young man? When do you feel more scared? Night. Sorry? Night. At night. Right? We feel more scared at night. So when the sun is out, there's a feeling of security. The same applies when the father is around. When the father is around, earning takes place. That's his role. And when he's around, the family feels secure. When do you feel more secure? When your father's out at work or when he's at home? When he's at home. MashaAllah, you have a wonderful accent, MashaAllah. When he's at home. So there's similarities. In the same breath, we have the moon. The moon is serene. It has light, but it's not bright and blinding. It's serene. It allows you to look at it and become amazed and appreciate its beauty. Right? Right? And this is the mother in the home. She is pretty and serene and peaceful. And the moon takes its light from the sun. Right? The, the brighter the sun, the brighter the moon. The same thing in the home. The more effective the father, the more effective the mother. When the moon is out, the stars are out, twinkling. When the sun is out, the stars are there. But do you notice them? Do you see them? We don't. And the same thing in the home. The children are more with the mother. Subhanallah, look at the Quran. And the Quran is giving us a sociology lesson for those who ponder and reflect. For those who ponder and reflect. This wasn't narrated to us just for the sake of it. There were lessons in it. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفْ وَإِخْوَتِهِ آيَاتْ لِسَائِلِينَ in Yusuf and his brothers, there are lessons and signs for those who ask. These are the lessons from Surah Yusuf. So, we see when the moon is out, the stars are out. And they're twinkling. The same thing with the mother in the home. When she's out and she's effective, the children are happy, they're jumping around her. They're always around her. Right? They're not around the father as much as they are around the mother. So this is role play. And the importance of everybody looking after their roles. And then we have another lesson. And that is in the way of the sun choosing to play the role of the moon. And the moon choosing to play the role of the sun. What happens when both try to play each other's roles? What happens physically? You have something called an eclipse. You have something called an eclipse. And this is the same thing that happens in a home. When the father wants to play the role of the mother and or in other words, let's not say that because these are shared roles, but when the husband wants to play the role of the wife and the wife wants to play the role of the husband, what happens? You have an eclipse but it's called a social eclipse. You have a social eclipse and when an eclipse happens the effect of the sun is weakened and the effect of the moon is weakened and the stars are nowhere to be seen. The same thing in the home. When the social eclipse happens, the role of the mother is weakened and the role of the father is weakened and the children suffer the most. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us diligent with his book. Ameen. So this is a lesson from the Quran with regards to the home and with regards to roles and looking after these roles.